Hello again and welcome back all my favorite coder cats and coder kittens. As usual, this is Becca going by Netcat or Netcat's Meow most places online. Here to be your coder kitty talking to you about Linden scripting language. Alright, this time we have a tutorial request from Caitlin about trying to do a shooting game. Now those of you who followed the series the whole time know I did actually create that tennis ball tosser with a target a while back. But this is going to be much more involved. But if you want a basic primer on how to create a thrown object or a shooting object, you can start with that one. We will actually cover a couple different ways to do something like this when we make this. But one of the first things we're going to cover is sort of preludes or things you need to understand before trying to make something like this. And that's going to be about what you can and cannot actually contact or interact with because there's a certain amount of variability to that. There are a few things you can do that appear to move things around, for example, that you're not going to quite get the results you think you will. So, let me just turn that into a ball. And there is a method of producing rotation that might look like it's perfect for creating a classic shooting gallery where you fire at a series of targets that are moving around in particular ways. And it's going to look up something, but then I'm like, you know what? Screw it. We'll just use the, the usual method. We'll look it up on the screen here. Target Omega. That is the command I was actually looking for. Come on. Pop over. Control C. We have vectors the axis for rotation, the spin rate, the speed, and the gain. It's final spin rate. Game stable. Okay. We'll have a better idea of what that all means when we plug in numbers to it in here. We'll say five zero zero. Just throwing something in there just to see what we wind up with. And then we'll adjust the numbers. Alright, now that appears to be spinning. Not quite the way I would have preferred it to. So we'll change that number to change the axis. This looks like it should. It stopped on its own. All right. Now I try to walk into that and I bump into the physics of the, the actual... I need to turn that function off. Oh no, I'm lagging. This is going to look really ridiculous. I might cut this out. Okay, there we go. Alright, what we found, I try to walk through the main part. It's physics is preventing me from going. However, I try to walk through... I am turning that function off. That was a function of my AO. 
just being a pain in my rear. But I try to walk through where that is. It's absolutely nothing. It's like that has no physics to it whatsoever. So there are options to look at, if I remember which the right ones are. needed. There's one that will actually let me look at the physics of some of these. I can't remember where it is. There it is. Render metadata. About my boxes. Alright. That is not the one I need after all. Okay, this is a problem because everything is got a... I'm inside something. Lovely. Um, Alright, that is not going to help me after all. Alright, the point is... <laughs> what I was hoping I could highlight with one of these options, but it was failing miserably, is that Omega like this, it is rendered client side, not server side, which is why that ball can just pass right through things without a problem. Uh, so a simple rotation like this is not going to give you quite the effect that you want on a object. What you would need if you wanted to make a proper targetable object that is handled server side is you would then, we're going to make a vector over here. Actually, we're going to make rotation. Rotation, rote. equals get rote rote equals rote plus since we're dealing with rotational mathematics it's actually a four point system the short version of why is because SL uses the four point rotation used in advanced engineering for gimbal devices, which is a method that means the mechanical object can still move a full, you know, at any angle within three-dimensional space without getting stuck, whereas if you only had three points with that, there are certain ways it could get hung up on itself. It's a really complicated explanation. If you want to explain better, by all means, look it up. I am, I only kind of get, I, I get why, but I'm not really an expert in that field, so I'm not great at explaining it. This, however, should produce a server-based continuous rotation. There it goes, it just ticked. It ticked once, so that reminds me what I actually need to do is take this to a timer. Plunk that in there. Set timer event 0 0.1.
and given how much that moved, we're going to drop that to one. Save. system lag or what's going on. There's a more advanced mathematical formula that will get you more precise control over the object than this, but there it goes. Now it's going. Ah, it moved itself down. So what we're probably, since it's intent on positioning itself this way, like a really weird exclamation point, that means I've got to go into the more advanced, a little deeper into rotational mechanics to actually make that work. But the point is, if you want it to be tracked server side, which is necessary if you want objects to strike it correctly, if you want it to maintain correct physics interaction, then you have to use the slightly more more difficult setting of going through and actually telling it to adjust the rotation each time. So if you want the classic it spins around to bring targets in and out in a shooting gallery, that's how you're going to have to do that part. The other thing is it was mentioned possibly making a laser tag system with a lot of this. And the problem with that is that the avatar itself does not register individual locations that it struck. It just registers that something has impacted it. So getting targeted locations is going to be a bit difficult there. And objects attached to the avatar have absolutely no physics whatsoever, as I will kind of sort of demonstrate by creating a ball, giving it physics, making it larger. Now, if I were to walk up on this, since it's physical, it moves, as you'd expect it to. I can also kind of drag it around, like some sort of digital telekinesis. But if I go and add something to my avatar, let me actually just pull out something from my RP sim character. This is not going to be centered right because it's not scaled for this avatar. But it gives me a convenient way to draw it out. Can I find the freaking click point? There we go. So now I've got this thing out here. So, as you see, it's passing through the space there. And it's not really doing anything to it until my avatar itself bumps into it. Another way I can demonstrate this particular behavior will be I will show you with animations but we're going to go back to the strange rendering I showed you under metadata and that is not quite the one I wanted though it is interesting There it is. That's the one I wanted. All right. That, those blue balls in the, the, the shapes in there, 
that sounds really, really wrong, but if you're looking at the screen, you know exactly what I mean. This indicates the what triggers for collision. I can walk right up to something until those blue spaces interact, and it's fine. The other is the avatar hitbox. That indicates the actual area that the avatar is considered to contact with. That is actually the, the, the pit box is the one that really does it more than anything else. So we're gonna turn off the other. So until then, links to the playlists are in the description. That is both for Coder Kitty's workshop, the series you're watching now, you actually labeled as Learn Lend and Scripting Language because I was a lot more boring when I first created the series and Coder Kitty Decoded, where I break down the syntax and arguments of various LSL commands for your convenience for those who like the way I present information. So those are all available. As usual, videos are posted uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays by noon. If I have a review, it goes up Thursday by noon. So until then, good day, good week, good luck, happy coding, meow.